Hi everybody. Programming is all about taking data and manipulating it in all sorts of interesting ways. Now, depending on what we're doing, our data needs to be represented in a form that makes it easy for us to actually use. This form is better known as a data structure. As we will see shortly, data structures give the data we're dealing with a heavy dose of organization and scaffolding. This makes manipulating our data easier and, for the most part, more efficient. We're going to learn more about data structures in this video. You've probably heard the phrase, right tool for the right job before, and if we had to use a phrase to describe how to think about data structures, that would be it. To better understand the importance of data structures, let's look at an example. Here's the setup. We have a bunch of tools and related gadgets, and what we want to do is store these tools for easy access later. One solution is to throw all of our tools in a giant cardboard box, similar to the ones we might get if we were to order a lot of things online and just have them laying around. We can throw these tools into a box and call it a day. And depending on the size of the tools or the frequency of tools, it doesn't really matter. Just open the box, put them in there and shake it a bit to make more room for more tools. But you can eventually succeed in storing all of your tools, moving the box away and, and succeeding at your task. With our tools in a box, if you want to find a particular tool, we can rummage through our box to find what we're looking for. But if what we're looking for happens to be buried deep in the bottom of our box, that's a problem. It's going to be a hassle to get that item, if you have to move some other items around to make room for it. It's not the easiest of things to do. So I think you and I can agree that rummaging the things works, but there may be better approaches. And a better approach could be, instead of throwing things into a box, we could store them in something that allows for better organization. We could store them into a toolbox. One of these toolboxes that have compartments to help us organize the items and be able to find them much easier later on. So with our toolbox, well, it takes a bit of extra effort for the items initially. You have to open the drawer, you have to find out what tool you're currently trying to store and where the toolbox is designed to store that particular tool. You have to do a little bit of like extra planning and extra work. But all this organization, though, does make it easier for us to find and retrieve a tool later on. And the, for these two approaches, you want to summarize when a cardboard box is good and when a toolbox is good for the most common tasks. So it's a bit as follows. Let's say we're talking about adding an item. A cardboard box, extremely simple. You just open the box, throw the item in, you're good to go. With a toolbox, to add an item, you kind of have to know what the item is and where the toolbox is designed to store that particular item, so it's a little bit slower. But then when you talk, when you talk about finding and removing items, because a toolbox gives you a little bit of organization up front, it makes it easier for us to know exactly where to go to either find a tool or remove it. With a cardboard box, a lot of it just depends on where in the stack of things in a cardboard box, things are stored. If it's at the top, fast, but on average though, it's gonna be pretty slow because you have to you know, just kind of rummage through it just like a raccoon earlier to figure out where things are. What we can see is this, both our cardboard box and our toolbox are good for some situations and bad for others. There's no universally right answer. There's no perfect solution here. When it comes to programming and computers, deciding which data structure to use is very similar to deciding whether to store tools in a cardboard box or a toolbox. Every data structure we will encounter is good for some situations and bad for other situations. And knowing which data structure to use and when is probably the most important things that we'll do, not just as a developer, but also just someone trying to better understand how to solve problems using computers. And on the screen right now, you can see just a few of the data structures we will be learning more about and that's gonna be critical to building the kind of things that we wanna do. And over the next many articles and videos, since you're watching it, we'll learn what each data structure you see on screen is good at, and more importantly, what types of operations and activities that each data structure is not very good at. And by the end of it, you and I will have created a pretty good mental map of connecting the right data structure, the right programming problem, and be able to solve everything very, very easily. So if you enjoyed this content, you'll probably also enjoy my book, Algorithms, Absolute Beginner's Guide, where we look at the right algorithm with the right data structure and how we could make solving any problem pretty efficient and learning data structures and algorithms of course isn't the easiest of things so there's a friendly community willing to help for any questions post in the forums at forum.group.com link is below speaking of links below this video you'll see more links to all the resources that you've seen in this video and for ways of keeping up with the content that i create see you all next time